Let's take a look at the galvanic cell and how it works. Firstly, remember a galvanic cell is a cell in which chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. How do we visually distinguish between an electrolytic cell and a galvanic cell? Well, remember a galvanic cell has two beakers, two half cells, two electrolytes. So an electrolyte in this one and an electrolyte in this one, different electrolytes, a salt bridge connecting the two half cells. And you will often see a voltmeter connected in the external circuit. So that would be a voltmeter over there detecting a voltage or an EMF. It's very important to remember that in a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell, the anode is negative. And I remember it using this acronym. In a voltaic cell, the anode is negative, which means that the cathode would be positively charged. Remember, there are two electrodes. Here's an electrode. Here's an electrode. One of them is the anode and one of them is the cathode. Now, in a moment, I will tell you how to figure out which one is the anode and which one is the cathode. We'll be using this table to do that. But first, a few other reminders regarding the galvanic cell or the voltaic cell. So we've mentioned the charge of the anode and the cathode. Applications, these are batteries. Galvanic cells are batteries. It is important to note that the galvanic cell makes use of spontaneous reactions. So no energy is required in order for these reactions to occur. They are self-sustaining electrode reactions and they are exothermic, which means a release of energy. Now, to show you how the galvanic cell operates, I'm going to be making use of the zinc copper cell. So the zinc copper cell makes use of zinc as one of its electrodes, so the metal zinc, and copper as its other electrode. And you can actually see this on this diagram over here. I've got zinc metal over here, and it's connected with a wire to the external circuit. Remember, I told you that there would be a voltmeter of some sort over there, and it's connected to the copper electrode. Each of these electrodes are suspended in their electrolyte solution. These are the definitions for electrolytes. Remember, you can give I the definition. So substance of which the aqueous solution contains ions. So in the zinc copper cell, this zinc electrode is suspended within an electrolyte called zinc sulfate. So remember, zinc sulfate like this. That will contain the following ions. It will contain sulfate ions, SO4, 2 minus. Sulfate ions have a charge of negative 2, and therefore these zinc ions will have a charge of plus 2. So that's zinc sulfate. And the copper electrode is suspended in copper sulfate in that electrolyte. Again, copper sulfate, that would contain copper ions and sulfate ions. So the electrolyte is basically a salt solution that contains moving ions. And the movement of ions through the electrolyte completes the circuit. Now, as I mentioned, one of these electrodes is the anode, the other is the cathode. How are we going to know which is which? First of all, you have to know that the oxidation half reaction, oxidation takes place at the anode and reduction takes place at the cathode. This is something that is true for both galvanic and electrolytic cells. Remember, red cat, reduction takes place at the cathode, and anox, oxidation, takes place at the anode. This is valuable information, but I still don't know, based off of this, which one, zinc versus copper, which one experiences oxidation, and which one experiences reduction. However, if I know the two substances involved, so zinc and copper, I can figure out which one will be oxidized and which one will be reduced using my table. So in your exams, you'll either receive or you'll receive both tables 4A and 4B. They are basically, they're very similar. They're just basically inverses or opposites of each other. Most schools use table 4B. I will be using table 4B, which you can see over here. Just be careful not to mix them up in the exam. Draw a line through the one that you're not going to use. So we're going to use table 4A. And what this table is, it is a standard reduction potentials table. And what that means is it takes different substances. This is just a screenshot of the table. It takes different substances and it arranges them in order of their ability to act as a reducing agent or an oxidizing agent. So as I mentioned in a previous video in this playlist, you can see the table. It has all the values arranged. It's got different half reactions. That's why they have little double arrows because they can be written left to right or right to left. What's important to note about this table is it's got two arrows on it. The arrow on the right is pointing up and the arrow on the left is pointing down. The arrow on the right says increasing strength of reducing agents. And what that means is the higher up you are on the table. So these ones that I'm circling here, they are much higher on the table than say these ones down here. So the higher up you are on the table, that means that you are a stronger reducing agent. So 
the higher up you are on the table, the more likely you are to be oxidized. Remember, this is also something I spoke about in a previous video. If you are a strong reducing agent, you will be oxidized. So reducing agent, oxidized. Okay. If you are a strong oxidizing agent, you will be reduced. You are more likely to be reduced. So what this means, and if this is, it's a lot of confusing words, but what I want you to focus on is looking at the table. We start on the right hand side of the table. Okay. The things that are higher up on the table. So you look at the right hand side. So I mean the right hand side here and you go top right. The things that are on the top are stronger reducing agents. So therefore they are more likely to be oxidized. Okay, and then in the same way, look at the left hand side of the table, increasing strength of reducing agents, sorry, of oxidizing agents. So as you go down the table, these things down here, they are stronger oxidizing agents, so they are more likely to be reduced. So what I do is I look at the cell that I'm working with, and as you know, I've got a zinc copper cell. So we go to our table, you look for zinc and you look for copper. So if you look at the table, you will see that zinc is over here there's zinc oh i'm highlighting the wrong one let me just circle it rather here is zinc on the table and then let's look for copper if you scroll down there's a whole lot of coppers that you will see the copper that we use most of the time 99 percent of the time is the following copper the 0 0.34 copper the reason why is it because it goes cu2 plus it gains two electrons and it becomes solid copper. Some of the other versions are Cu plus and or let's say Cu2 plus for example and then it gains one electron and it becomes Cu plus but I'm not looking for that one. Like I said most of the time we make use of the 0, 0.34 copper so do you see how I circle both of them on the table? Okay they're both circled I've got the zinc cell and I've got the copper cell that's why I'm circling this one there's zinc yeah, and I'm circling copper because I've got the copper cell. Then you need to ask yourself, which one is on top? I care about the one on top because the one on top, remember, according to my table, look at the arrow, the one on top is the stronger reducing agent, increasing strength of reducing agent. So what that means, you start at the top right. This is the stronger reducing agent. If you are the stronger reducing agent, it means that zinc is oxidized and remember oxidation takes place at the anode an ox so therefore zinc is the anode do you see how i made all of those connections based on the table so that means that zinc is the anode and we also know in the voltaic cell or the gal galvanic cell the anode is negative so zinc is the negative electrode this one is the negative electrode what this means is that the other electrode is the cathode. The copper electrode is the cathode. And why is copper the cathode? We can also look at the table. So because copper is lower down on the table, copper is a stronger oxidizing agent. Remember the arrow points this way. As you go down, you become a stronger oxidizing agent, which means you will be reduced. So the copper ions are going to be reduced. Now, a nice way to remember how to read the table is you circle the two things that you are busy with. So we circled copper and zinc because it's a zinc copper cell. It might not always be zinc copper. It could be zinc and silver or copper and whatever nickel. You have to circle the two things. You start at the top. So you go to your table, you start at the top and you start on the right hand side. Then you go down. So you look down, 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 down until you find the first one that you've circled. I've circled zinc first. That means that zinc will be oxidized. The one you come across first, the one at the top is the one that is oxidized because it's the stronger reducing agent. Then once you found that, you hop to the other side of the table. So now we're looking at the left hand side of the table and you keep reading down, 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 down until you hit the other substance. There's the other substance, copper 2 plus. So it is going to be the copper 2 plus that is reduced. Remember, reduction is gain of electrons. So it's this copper 2 plus that's going to gain these electrons to form the solid copper. So what we can do is we can therefore say copper 2 plus is reduced or the copper ions are reduced. 
which means that Cu2 plus, the copper ions, is the oxidizing agent. And that makes sense. It's lower down on the table. It's the oxidizing agent, the stronger oxidizing agent, which makes copper, this metal, the cathode. Because remember, red cat. And what does red cat stand for? Reduction, reduction takes place at the cathode. And then we said the anode is negative, so the cathode is therefore positive. The copper is therefore the positive electrode. Now, how do we write down the half reactions? So I said, yeah, as I mentioned, we look for zinc and copper on the table. We use the table 4B. You start at the top. The first substance you come across is oxidized. And we read this from right to left. Now, what do I mean about this? So again, you start at the top of the table. You start on the right-hand side. And you look down, 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 down. The first thing you come across, which is zinc, not copper. Copper is too far down. I go down. I first come across zinc. Zinc is oxidized. You write the oxidation half reaction from right to left. And I go over this in my previous, my first video in this playlist. What I mean by writing a reaction from right to left is you start with whatever's on the right hand side, you draw an arrow, and then you write down whatever is on the left hand side like this. And if you take a look at this half reaction, it makes sense to be an oxidation half reaction. Why? Because oxidation is loss of electrons. The zinc metal is being oxidized. Zn is being oxidized, which means Zn or zinc is losing these electrons and it's forming zinc ions. Just remember, when writing an oxidation half reaction, your electrons must be on the right hand side. You are losing them. Then how do you find the reduction half reaction? Again, we use our table, so you can carry on moving down. The next one you come across is reduced. It's the stronger oxidizing agent, and we read that one from left to right. So what we mean by this is, okay, we've sorted out the zinc half reaction. Then you carry on. Now you're looking at the left-hand side. You read down, 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 until you hit the second reaction. This is the substance, Cu2+. Plus. Cu2+, plus, that is a substance that is being reduced. That is a substance that is gaining electrons. And you read it, you always read the reduction half reaction from left to right. In other words, how you would normally read a book. So you start on this side, you write down that stuff, Cu2 plus plus 2E minus, then you draw an arrow, and then you write Cu, just like that. Take note, when we write a reduction half reaction, the electrons are on the left-hand side of the arrow. So take note, Zn is being oxidized, the zinc metal. Zn is the reducing agent. Zn is losing electrons. And when it comes to speaking about reduction, it's not the copper that is being reduced. It is the Cu2 plus that is being reduced. Why? Because it's the copper 2 plus, it's the copper ions. Copper 2 plus or copper ions are gaining the electrons. Take a look at how we've written the half reaction. It's this thing that is gaining the electrons. And remember, if you are reduced, then you are also called the oxidizing agent. So with these two half reactions happening, how does a galvanic cell actually function? What happens if we look at the bigger picture? So as we said, the zinc is being oxidized. So the zinc is going to lose electrons. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Now, where do these electrons go? The electrons move from the anode where oxidation occurs. Remember, an Ox, oxidation is happening here. These electrons go from the anode and they travel to the cathode. That's where they're going. You can see here by the little arrows pointing above, they travel through the external circuit. So that's what happens to the electrons. But what happens to the zinc ions, the Zn2 plus? Now remember, there were already Zn2 plus ions in the electrolyte solution to start off with. Remember, the electrolyte contains zinc sulfate, ZnSO4 which contains the zinc ions as well as the sulfate ions. So we already have some zinc and some sulfate in the solution that's kind of just chilling there. Then as oxidation happens, can you see that we form more zinc ions? So there's going to be more zinc ions being deposited into the solution over here. Now what that means is that over time, the charge of the anode half cell increases, so it becomes more positive. What is also going to happen, what you'll also observe, is that the zinc electrode will decrease in mass. The reason why is because the solid zinc metal is losing electrons and the zinc ions are being deposited into the solution. So the zinc electrode will decrease in mass. 
Then on the other side, other half cell, remember the reduction half reaction takes place as follows. The copper two plus ions accept the electrons. The copper two plus ions are reduced and they form Cu. Now, this is quite important. Take note. This is the reduction half reaction. And I'm telling you that copper two plus ions are going to start accepting electrons. Where do these copper two plus ions come from? I know where the electrons come from. Remember we said the electrons travel in the external circuit. So the electrons come from the anode. But where do these copper two plus ions come from? Just the same as with the anode half cell, the, the cathode half cell has copper sulfates in the electrolyte. So it contains Cu2 plus ions and SO42 minus ions. So in this solution over here, in the electrolyte solution, we've got some copper two pluses and we also have some SO42 minuses. These copper two pluses accept the two minus electrons that are traveling around from the anode. So this accepts this, the copper two ions, gain the electrons, they get reduced, reduction is gain of electrons, and when they gain those electrons, they form solid copper on the cathode. So solid copper coats the cathode. And I always say, I think of alliteration when I think of the cathode, coating, we always coat or we cover the cathode because reduction always takes place at the cathode and this is a solid. So what ends up happening is that the copper electrode will increase in mass, increase in mass over time. But what about the, the charge inside this electrolyte solution in the cathode? Remember we said that the anode half cell becomes more positive over time. The reason we said that is because when oxidation happens, more zinc ions, Zn2 plus ions, get deposited into the electrolyte solution as time goes on. But in the cathode, the opposite happens. Remember, our positive ions these little Cu2 pluses that are floating around in the electrolyte, they get taken up, they accept electrons. So the copper two plus essentially gets removed from the solution. They are being reduced. So what ends up happening is the cathode half cell becomes less positive or more negative over time. So our anode half cell over here is becoming more positive as time goes on and our cathode half cell is becoming more negative as time goes on. And this imbalance can't continue to happen because then the cell will stop functioning. So when this happens with the charges, the anode becoming more positive, the cathode becoming more negative, this is where the salt bridge comes into play. Now the salt bridge is part of the galvanic cell and it contains an electrolyte providing electrical contact between the two solutions. A salt bridge contains a neutral solution, so it can be something like sodium sulfate or common ones, potassium chloride, even sodium chloride, potassium nitrate. They often use nitrates and sulfates, maybe silver nitrate. That's a common one in some electrolytic cells. It basically contains ions that won't react with any of the substances used in the two half cells. It's important to note that the electrolytes in the salt bridge, they contain ions which are weak reducing agents and weak oxidizing agents. Basically, we don't want these ions to be ion uh, to oxidize or reduced. They're basically spectator ions. And you might think, oh, well, then what's the purpose of them? So if you think about our example, our salt bridge contains KCl. Now, as you know, KCl can be split up into potassium ions, which are positive, and chloride ions, which are negative. And as I mentioned, the anode half cell becomes more and more positive. So remember, this is the anode. It's becoming more and more positive. The cathode becomes more and more negative. Now, to balance this out, to neutralize or to maintain electrical neutrality, so to make sure things are neutral, the negative ions from the salt bridge migrate to the anode because a negative and a positive will basically attract and cancel each other out. And then the positive ions, the cations, will migrate to the cathode because positive and negative. So basically it acts as an ion exchanger. It ensures electrical neutrality. So when the one solution becomes too positive, the little, little negative ion migrates into the solution to cancel out that. So when you are asked about the functions of the salt bridge, this is what you're going to say. It completes the circuit by connecting the two half cells. It maintains electrical neutrality. This is a nice one. They like this one. It keeps the electrolytes separate so that they do not mix. 
And that is a basic summary of how a galvanic cell works using the zinc copper cell. I hope that that helped. There's a lot more to galvanic cells, such as calculating the EMF, doing the cell notation or the net reaction. I'll cover that in other videos in this playlist. But let me know in the comments what you learned in this video, what else you want to see. Let me know how you found it. I love all the comments. I love, re I read every single comment and your support means everything to me. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.